Well, that, that was incredible. I think, uh, I think my cosmonaut friends can agree that we've come quite a way from, uh, from that first launch of uh, Yuri Gagarin, quite a few years since then. And, and the IAF has played such a, such a role. And uh, Fred, maybe, maybe you could tell us a little bit about, uh, about, about the IAF and how it came about, especially in, in such a decade, the 1950s. Yeah, and I can explain to you that uh, at the end of 1949, some engineers from Great Britain, France, and Germany got together, and they realized they had to transform uh, wartime rocket technology into a system for peaceful exploration of the space. And uh, so they uh, decided to draw up a memo and send this memorandum around to all known, at the time, known rocket societies, and they uh, explaining this, and they got um, many answers and they decided it was worth it to found something like the International Astronautical Federation. And the um, French um, Association and the British Association got together and organized a first Congress and the opening, actual opening of the IAF for October in 1950. And this is how it came about at the time. Interesting, very interesting. I mean. You know, I'd say many from, from our generation, I'd say from my young generation, we don't, maybe don't appreciate as much of all the activities that went on in the 1950s. But in fact, that really is when we started to, to work on realizing some of these technical dreams of ours that we've had, including, of course, Sputnik, but also that of the, the, first, uh, the first plannings of Yuri Gagarin's flight. I'm sure, Sergei, you have, uh, I'm sure you have uh, thought about, uh, Ms. about Yuri Gagarin quite a bit uh, as a cosmonaut yourself. Do you think that in the future we're, we're going to have anybody who, with, with the legacy that, uh, that Yuri has had? For me now, it's difficult to imagine that someone will have the same legacy of, as Yuri Gagarin had because he was the first in comparing it with uh, aviation. Everyone knows about Wright brothers, but probably people don't remember who was first flying, first uh, jet airplane, or first get supersonics. Although it was big achievement, but people still remember first someone who was first. So Gagarin was first. Maybe some event, something like going to Mars, uh, that may be the same scale, but at this point it's difficult for me to rem imagine what else can happen. Hmm. Well, what do you think, Mars, in the next, uh, what, maybe in, in my generation's time, perhaps, do we think? Uh, why not? Uh, it's possible. But uh, again, Aaron, I have a question about that. What do you think about the um, young people now? Because uh, in the 50s, uh, you probably you know, so it's mostly uh, who will who was involved in the creation space program was the young people in their 20s and 30s. And I wonder, is there any difference and similarities uh, between then and modern young generation? What do you think? I think, that, I think that's a very good question. I think uh, in terms of, I'd say the main similarity is something that young, young people in many sectors would especially in, uh, in space have to contribute. That's our energy and our innovative thinking. And that combined with, with veterans and experience, it's a, it's a pretty impressive combination. But in terms of the difference, I think that our generation, especially going forward, we're dealing with the, it's, it's not just young people from, uh, from the Soviet Union and the United States that think about contributing to space. It's people from, uh, around the world, young people from around the world. And I think that is, that's going to be an important part of, of the future. It's making sure that that's part of the education is that they see that the global space scape, as I like to call it, is in fact international and that we should be working together in this. Maybe the IEF can help in that. Well, to that, how about a cheers? That was fantastic. Cheers, friends. I really enjoy. The Space Bistro is really going well, thanks of you. Cheers. Now, you did a good job. 
is it true that when you flew, you, you left with the country, came, came back with another country, or what happened that time? Well, that's a long story, a long time ago. <laughs> Although I would say I left Russia and returned back to Russia. Actually, we landed uh, to Baikonur, that was part of uh, Kazakhstan. Uh, only difference was that uh, at that time it was combination of, uh, it was Soviet Union, uh, Union of different republics, and then this republic came to community of independent states. So for us doing um, space business, uh, space flights, uh, all those, this was uh, secondary. Wow. Be because, because, really, because uh, when, when I was in space, I knew that um, many people uh, spend a lot of efforts sending us there, giving us um, uh, assignment what to do and how to do. And uh, we, we were worrying of what happened on the ground, but still m most important for us was to do well what we did. Fantastic. I think that, that was, I, I'd like to stay here the whole night.